there. Welcome to the QB Show. My name is Stacey Kildall, and my co-hosts are Woody Adams and Dawn Brolin. We want to ask you guys to take a couple minutes to visit each one of our sponsors and check them out. They've been helping us bring this show to you for the last four years. We have Avalara.com, making sales tax less taxing. They will calculate and pay your sales tax liability and take care of all of your returns as well. We have tsheets.com. This is probably the number one employee rated time tracking application on the planet, if not the galaxy, and an amazing team of people behind it. We have Skyline Hosting by UnidataIT.com. This is where we host all of our QuickBooks uh, software as well as our other software like Microsoft Office. So please take a minute and visit them, and I hope you enjoy our show. Yeah. Okay. Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to the QB Show. It's October 28, 2014, and this is the week following QuickBooks Connect, which was an epic, epic adventure. Uh, I'm going to hold off. I'm playing the part of Woody. He's got a power outage. He's trying to log in from his phone. I don't expect him to be here, which is a bit of a bummer. Uh, and that's okay. We're okay with that. Uh, we can do that. We are uh, experiencing technical issues yet again with our chat room, uh, so bear with us on that. Uh, probably not going to have live chat as much as it gives me sads. Um, but you know what, if you want to just maybe go to the Twitters, uh, we can all chit chat on Twitter and we'll just hashtag it um, QB show or you can just, um, I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do. And you know what, it really doesn't matter because we're all just going to have a good time and I'm all fidgety already. So um, Dawn, why don't you introduce yourself um, All right, I am Dawn Rowland, I'm and sure. yeah, yeah, put your hands underneath your legs and just be quiet. And so I'm just kidding. And so uh, I'm Dawn Rowland from Wyndham, Connecticut. For those of you who don't know, um, I love t-sheets, so I have my t-sheets hat on. And my my t-sheet hat, my t-sheets hat is in transit. Yeah, so, yeah, cat, yeah. yeah. So for uh, those of you who are new to the QuickBooks show, to the QB show. Done. Okay, go ahead. Do I'm just going to, you said cat, so I'm just yeah. letting them know about the cat. Uh, I'm a crazy cat lady, and I have four cats. And uh, anytime you see one walk behind me, if you have any sort of liquid in your hands, that's uh, safe to drink. Uh, take a drink of it. And if you see more than one cat in the frame at one time, uh, you, you know what, that's our hashtag. In, and I'll get to that in a second. Uh, you you finish. So our hashtag for the show, because we don't have the live chat, will be C Cat Drink. How about that? S E C A T D R I N K. So if you follow that hashtag, you'll be able to chat with us uh, live on the show. How's that? Good. All right. Hashtag C Cat Drink. All right. Tweet. I just tweeted, which is really good for me. I've been really working on my tweetering. Your tweetering? Um, better. Trying to get better at that. But yeah, an epic was my word. I tweeted epic. So I'm going to I'm gonna take that for QB Connect. Um, I honestly am blown away by the event. Um, had no idea really what to expect. Not that anyone did except for the people who knew, um, which is one whole thing. But um, so uh, certainly it was amazing. I, I really It's hard for me to explain all that happened. Um, I did teach the advanced certification for desktop and I had a, at least 200 people in the room um, and they were a fantastic group of people. It was awesome. Lots of questions. Lots of questions. Um, and it was great. People were awesome. Good people. We've ha I've had people emailing me uh, since last Monday who have passed the exam and I'm very very excited for them very happy really they just needed me to kick them in the butt so that's cool and so I also got a shirt right Stace we got shirts we did get shirts we got uh, mine is in transit I, sh I, I got so much stuff at that event I didn't have any room in my suitcase and I had to ship a whole bunch of stuff home and mine is not going to be here tomorrow so mine says don't say the desktop it's only a preference which, if, for those of you who are on that show with um, one of my favorite people, Seth David, um, Don't Save the Desktop was um, something we were kind of laughing about because I am the desktop person, uh, the desktop lover. 
not the only person, but just on the show, I'm the desktop person. Um, and so anyway, it was really great. We, there were so many, so many opportunities for training. Uh, the, it was more fun than I can even explain. I'm just getting my voice back. Um, I have been going to bed at 2.30 in the morning Eastern time, so I want to thank Intuit for uh, residing in California. That's worked out awesome for me. No. But you know what? It was worth it, and I'll tell you why. We saw more Intuit. The, it, it, honestly, for me, I mean, I've been involved with Intuit directly since like 06, and there are so many people that I've come across since that time that they're typically never in the same place ever, and they were, it was like a family reunion. If you know any Intuit people, and they're all so wonderful. I, I don't remember if there were 500 or 800 of them there, but they were everywhere. Oh, but they were kind of incognito because they were not, I will know that's not true because they were wearing those black shirts, but everybody was wearing a black shirt, right? So, um, but they were just, it was amazing. I don't even, I'm going to stop talking because I think I'm, I'm going in circles because it was that good. Uh, but the training was phenomenal. The opportunities to go to different things, like they had tax. I was on a tax panel, and it was super fun, which makes me a nerd, um, with two people who were or actually three on, in the panel that were super smarter than me. I learned so much being in there, and it was just that was really fun for me. Um, so Intuit just offered so much diversity from any other event I've ever been to, and from what I understand, it is known that they will, or Brad Smith said it, so if he says it, it's going to happen, that they're going to have this event in 2015, and my thing that I said to Chris Rapetto was, I don't know how you're going to top it. I mean, I just don't, like, I'm already freaked out, like, I don't know how they're going to do it, because it was that good. So, that was QuickBooks Connect for me. I loved it. Um... That's it. That's what I have to say about that. It was un it was just unbelievable, really. Yeah. I will say uh, I agree completely. It yeah. was the the venue was amazing from the minute you walked into the front door. Um, it was absolutely gorgeous. It was beautiful. I just want to say the food was some of the best food I have ever had. It was definitely not conference food. It was really amazing. Um, the hackathon was such an awesome. If you if you had a chance to, to stop in there, that was a really cool event. Um, Method CRM won. They created a nonprofit, an app for uh, connecting nonprofits uh, databases to QBO, I believe, is what they did. They won fifty five thousand dollars. I heard that they were going to give it to charity, but I'm not sure. I can't. Um, don't quote me on that. Uh, just really awesome. This the training. I was there pretty much Monday. Dawn and I were there Monday through Thursday. I only had. I was there Sunday. Well, Sunday we got there Sunday, but I mean we were at the event from okay. Monday to Thursday, and Dawn taught all day. And basically, I didn't really have anything that I was supposed to be doing, so I was just like in and out of all the different sessions um, and taking pictures. Uh, I was a tweeting, like I was a Twitter monster last week, so if anybody follows Stacey Kildall on Twitter, like it was all QBC, you know, hashtag QB Connect all the time, just because it was such a, an amazing event. And what I thought was really, really, really neat was, I, and I wasn't, I'll be honest, I wasn't expecting to love it as, as much as I did. And was the train concert. So I'm not a, the biggest train fan. I mean, they're, they're an okay band. I don't hate them, but I don't love them. I'm just kind of like, yeah, they're okay. But they were actually so much fun. They really didn't act like kind of a big, huge, famous band like they kind of are. Uh, I think Heather Kirkby put it best in, by explaining that they acted uh, like a wedding band. They brought uh, Helen Brosnan, uh, who works at Intuit, they brought her up, they did a, a Zeppelin cover, they did a Journey cover, and they brought Helen Brosnan up to, to sing with them. Uh, when they did their mermaid song, they brought like 30 chicks up on stage, and I actually had a pair of uh, shiny mermaid pants, and everybody kept telling me I should go up on stage, but um, I was not uh, going to do that. Um, the, and I do want to give a shout out, I don't have my shirt. Uh, from our listener, from our audience member, her name is Wendy Bloomberg, and she is amazing and awesome, and she 
she made cards, and the cards that she gave, she gave me some a gorgeous Wonder Woman shirt um, with Wonder Woman stickers, and she handmade each one of the cards that uh, she gave the shirts to us, uh, wrote us each notes that I swear each one of us, and I am this is no bullshit, and I'm going to say that word right now. Do each it. Each one of us almost, eat, to a person, Woody, Dawn, and I, almost cried because they were so, these notes were so sweet and so wonderful. Uh, and it's just one of those things where we do the show and we started doing the show just so we could help people. And we, a lot of times we, we don't get a lot of feedback. We have no idea really. I mean, we have people in the chat and they're kind of the you know, same regular people in the chat room. Um, but we really don't know if we're helping anybody, if we're having any effect. And so to get something like that, it's so amazing, so humbling, and so just wonderful, and it just it makes all of this absolutely wonderfully like worthwhile. So I just wanted to thank say um, thank you for her for doing that. And I know Woody is bumming because he he's wearing that shirt. I can promise you right now. I know, and you know, yeah, he has the power outage. He was trying to log in through his phone and he couldn't. So sorry about that. And bless her heart. She thinks I'm a large. Yeah. Bless her heart. She didn't even get me too large. I have not tried. I did not try mine on. I was waiting because I wanted to wear it, but it didn't get here. It didn't get here yet. So it should be here oh, tomorrow. I so I will have mine on next week. Uh, I also hey. want to mention too that uh, we got a we. I want to also mention thanks to our T sheets girls. Don and I spent a lot of time uh, with our. We got so we got to mention our sponsors. Uh, we spent a lot of time with people from Avalara. I got to chit chat with Brian uh, Austin. I talked to him a little bit. Love uh, our sponsors. Uh, Kevin. We saw Kevin Anderson from Unidata IT.com. They do our, our hosting. They host all of my clients who are on desktop. We have them hosted with oh. Unidata. Um, I don't know what that sound is, but it's really loud. It's my, it's me. Okay. It's my email because I'll shut it down. Okay. And so then um, we also spent a lot of time with the T-Sheets uh, girls. Love them to death. And they had stacks of tattoos. And so Dawn and I were actually uh, tattooing a lot of the other Pro Advisor girls. We were taking them into the bathroom. And uh, we were tattooing them on their backs. Uh, they were, we were giving them tea stamps, uh, tea sheets, tea stamps. So, and Dawn has some there, so we have some left over. So, uh, I will be at Sleater. Yeah, I will be at Sleater uh, in a couple weeks. So, and I will be probably hanging out a lot in the tea sheets booth because they're the ones uh, who are bringing me out there to do some stuff in their sessions. And I want to um, just say that. So yeah, and I should, next week on the show, I should wear the mermaid pants. So uh, just so I can give you guys a little glimpse because they, the mermaid pants are kind of awesome and I had a lot of people ask me because they're turquoise and they're shiny and they look like they have scales. And I had so many people ask me if I got them just for the concert and I'm just going to go on the record to say, no, I did not. Uh, I actually wear those all the time, like just to the grocery store, to take my kids to school. <laughs> like I wear wow. those crazy ass pants all the time. But we have questions. We do. And I, I, w I would actually like to start out with a, um, I don't have the uh, knowledge base article because I was really in a panic technically. Um, but I have learned some things about the Intuit Sync Manager that I would love to share um, okay. that, that I think people, uh, you know, so I'll use T-Sheets for the example because that's who it was that I was trying to set a client up and we've synced her desktop file historically. She's hosted by Unidata, of course. Um, and so, but what we ended up having to do because the client also wanted Tally, we needed to put her into a special environment so we could have the Tally sync tool automatically running in the background of the environment. So any of our clients that were that we have asked for, t for Tally, we're now moving to this one special environment that Unidata has so graciously set up for our clients. Um, and so this client happened to use Tally and um, and, t uh, and T sheets, of course, T sheets. And so we had already done a sync before and all this, but they moved the data file. So the hidden secret was the fact that the data file, regardless of where it may reside now, was moved, the original QBW. And sometimes the Intuit Sync Manager gets a little mad about that. And so uh, I spent some time last night, uh, awesome T sheet support. 
and Nina was my helper last night. I met um, a couple of the other girls this morning, and they're fabulous. And I can't just can't think of their names off the top of my head. Brianna, I think, was one of them, and Elise, I think, was the other one. And they were just rocking. And Kelsey has her instructions on how to treat them over here in the next week or so. But um, they helped me. They helped me make sure that all the preferences were set up, and and that was great. But what had to happen was we had to go basically tell the QuickBooks file, don't be friends with the Intuit Sync Manager anymore. So the data file's been moved. So I had and that's done through the help menu. Which listen, I you know, I haven't had to do a blowout of the sync manager and disconnect it from the desktop before. Um, so I did so just went on to Google, as always, and just Googled Intuit Sync Manager issues. And then it brought me to the support page, a few knowledge base articles, walked me through, go to the help menu go to manage connected services and like basically disconnect it from the sync manager. What that does is it puts the sync manager back into in the file menu for you to set the file back up and link it back up because part of the problem with it was that in the app center we couldn't see t-sheets anymore. So we knew that they they had we that the t-sheets and tally had been in the app center before and we knew she didn't have a separate login. So this is like a big troubleshooting situation that we went through between last night and this morning. And um, and it turns out with all the pieces of the puzzle, I'm like, it's not T-Sheets, it's not Tally, and I know it's not necessary, it's not Unidata. So I'm like, well, it's something with the App Center was my thing. So I tried to call the App Center, I didn't get a hold of them, and that's fine, but all the pieces of the puzzle were steering me towards something connected. Um, and so we ended up blowing out the sync manager, went through, Logged back into the you know to the app center through the desktop file, and then when we went to sync it with T sheets, the data file was there. So the desktop file was just not there. And and once we did all that, it was awesome. And I had Unidata this morning on the phone. Um, I can't remember her name. That's horrible. I think it's Carla with a K. I think was the girl's name, and she was on the phone with me for five minutes because the Internet Explorer would need to blow the cookies out. And all. I mean, it was awesome. It's the stuff we live for, people. If we were to be real about it, and so um, I mean, real, you know, which is sad and pitiful for me. But you know what? It's what I. It's who I am. I've grown to accept it. But it was absolutely fantastic. I had T sheets kicking butt. I had Unidata on it, making it happen, troubleshooting, and we got it done. The clients thrilled. Syncing is all happening. It's just, it's wonderful. That that's. That's a great example of an amazing troubleshooting process that took approximately two hours, probably of my time in total, but yeah. the support was there every time I needed. I'm like, oh crap, my client can't see the customers in T-sheets because I'm an, I, listen, I love T-sheets. I'm not an expert. I use it every day in my business for the things I need it for, but when it comes to setting it up, that happened a long time ago and I don't remember. So I make like Wendy and Ann and Christine do that stuff, but I was like nine one one, I need help. And T sheets was there, Unidata was there, and it was so fun. And someday, if I wanted to, maybe I'll do a little video kind of thing and 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 record what I did because it, it was just really a great. It was great. So that that so if you're having trouble with trying to get an app to sync with the desktop and you're just like it doesn't see the desktop file. Maybe you've moved the file is my point. You've maybe moved the file. Um, something's happened with the disconnection, but you can blow that connection out. It won't hurt anything. And then just reconnect it, sign back into the op center, and it will see that desktop file. So that's my story. It's not an answer to a question, but hopefully it's a solution to a problem. That's all I'm going to say about that. That is awesome. Good no, it's good. Woody would love that, by the way. Woody would have. Yeah, that's a good one. I miss Woody. I'm a little sad. You know what was really cool is if anybody didn't get to see it, we got to do the show. We very rarely get to do the show where we're all together. And last week we did it live, and we had a live. We did it. We were like, I kept saying, let's do it like Laverne and Shirley, live in front of. We'll film it live in front of the studio audience. And so we were able to do that. We had Matt Russell we, uh, from T Sheets. We had, um, and my favorite was that Woody. <laughs> Woody got his name wrong, and Woody was so horrified because Woody knows Matt's last name, and he just totally gapped out. I think it was just the excitement. He said of Riesel, that. I think. 
Yeah, it was awesome. And uh, so, but we also had Jan Huaga was there, and oh, two cats. Did you see? I saw one. I was wow. <laughs> right back, two cats. See cat drink hashtag. Uh, so it was really cool. We got to do it live, and so we had uh, Rissel and we had Matt Rep or Chris Rapetto. Um, <laughs> Matt Rapetto, Chris Russell, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. We just had a bunch of cool people. And then we had, you know, Kim Hogan and I think yeah. Allison Ball was back there. Yeah, um, yeah. Ball was there. That was awesome. I think Denitha was there. There was a bunch of people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think Eric Greenspan came over to me and tried to sit down next to me and I was shoving him away in the middle of it. I was like, no, no. So if you see me doing this, um, it was Eric Greenspan. Uh, it was really, really fun uh, to be able to do that live and to have all of us together um, at once. So there's two cats behind me, by the way. So, Dawn, I have, I have a question okay. for you. All right. I have a credit line account on which I have paid off some of the initial balance. Mm-hmm. Now I wish to borrow against the account again. How do I record this? First this question back to you is how many wishes do you have left? 22. Okay. So how do they record? So what they want to do, they've got a line of credit. Of course you treat that as an other current liability. Line of credit typically would be a within one year ability to pay back. Otherwise, you know, if it would be a loan long term. But you'll go ahead um, Wendy Bloomberg just emailed so I'm all freaked out. She's adorable. Um, so a credit line, so it's just like anything else, it's just like a paying a credit card or uh, getting a credit card credit sort of. So what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and let's just say, um, we're going to be hypothetical because I love that. Um, it's fun. Okay. So let's just say the line of credit is a $50,000 line of credit and the person has borrowed the whole, like 20000 of that money. So basically they would just do a, a transfer from the credit line into the bank account because I'm assuming that they're, in this case, that they're transferring it to their operating account and they're paying whatever they're paying out of that operating account. Just to keep it simple, they're not cutting checks out of the credit line. That's how we're going to assume, make some assumptions here. So uh, once they do that, so now they've got a $20,000 liability sitting on their balance sheet, and then they pay down, let's just say they paid down $15,000. So they will uh, do a transfer from their bank account into their back to their line of credit. So now their bank account's down by 15, but they probably made 100,000 because you know, you investing's a good idea. So they transfer the 15,000 back to the line of credit. So the line of credit's now down to 5 grand. And then from there, if they want to go ahead and borrow more funds back, which is why it gets the whole purpose of a line of credit is to borrow, invest in your company, pay it back, borrow, invest in your company and pay back. And the whole goal, goal from there is to get obviously keep that line of credit going uh, and continuing to build and invest in your company. So simply, you can either do it through a journal entry, um, which you know most of the time I do that. But uh, on some occasions, it's a check, or a, you can do a make deposit. You can do a bank transfer. There's like all kinds of different ways that, as far as in QuickBooks that you can do it. I don't recommend um, you know like using items or anything like that. That would be kind of goofy. Um, but anyway, so that that's how I would do it. I love that. All the answer to a small question, but I no, you know. it's not a small question. It's actually uh, I think a pretty a rather complex question. Oh, can uh, I make a note? One quick little note. I want it's like a little a little sidebar amendment to that answer. You have at it. I'm just gonna say also please reconcile the line of credit. I'm just gonna say that um, our purpose in am I shouting? I feel like I'm shouting. No, you're perfect. Okay. Okay. Um, certainly, one of the things that I would recommend that people do, um, and I've seen this happen before, somebody has a, a like a loan or a line of credit or something, um, and the and the operating account is paying it back, and they just don't record that liability, or it's paid out of a secondary account um, that just money washes in and out of. So they have an operating account that they transfer a number to another bank account, or that bank account auto pays the loan and they never book that secondary account that really for the most part just washes out every month and that's a big problem um, and I say that because being you know having be, being heavily involved in the IRS audit process 
they don't, they don't, they're not akin. Is that what you say? They don't like it when people say they're not akin. I'm not. I'm not. That akin. means they're not the same. Well, they don't like it. They they're don't. They're not down with it. They're not down with it. They yeah. don't want to see that there's a bank account that's not recorded on the books. They can't abide by it. They can't, because you know what? They know stuff. They know some things. They but know a few things. You're they right. Know things. So when you have to prove to them in a major audit, in a, especially in a criminal audit, if you have to prove to them all of the bouncing balls and you skip that one bank account, it's just questionable. It makes the data file and the the recorder of those do, of those transactions questionable, and gives doubt. Doesn't mean that it's convicting evidence, but it gives doubt and just complicates things. It makes you explain things, more things. Anyway, that's that's the long answer to my to my to the question. It's and it, I think it. Well, I look a little crazy, like I just got out of the wind. Um, no, I think it's a good one, and I think it. I think line of credit is. Uh, that's not. I don't think it's a short answer. I don't think it's an easy answer. I just want to say that. Mm. So uh, I just hashtagged Brolin. Keep rolling. We're just gonna oh. let Brolin keep rolling. So I'm just gonna make this the dawn show tonight. I'm just gonna ask you just a bunch of questions because there's a, a lot of really good ones. I'm uh, ready. I know you are. You have punched, you oh cat. You know. have punched in. That's my little Clilly. She's okay. my little menace. She is a menace to society. That one right there. I'm just gonna say she's she's young, but um, boy oh boy oh boy. She's yeah. Okay, so here's another good one. Um, is there a report to show profit or loss on sale of assets? I have assets on the balance sheet until they are sold and then enter the profit or loss on the P&L report. Is there a report that will show the original price paid for the asset, the sale price of the asset, and the profit or loss on the sale? My client is a real estate investor and would like to see this in one report. So that talks about combining a balance sheet and a P&L into one report, which is complicated and can be. Um, off the top of my head, thinking of somehow tagging the transactions related to that asset, especially if that's sounds like they're by obviously buying and selling properties. If they're a real estate agent, um, in that case, what they could do, uh, I'm just you know I I want to test this and maybe a follow up question uh, or demonstration at another time, but maybe pulling the trial balance, um, which I'm going to just open up my QuickBooks now because that's and it's, I'm over here. I know you're you're watching me, and I'm over here. You but, know how screen, do you want a screen share? You know how no, to screen share. Right right? I'm, not, I'm not prepared for screen shares. Okay. But what I think we can do is we could go ahead and and pull a trial balance and customize it by the customer name is what I'm thinking. If they're tagging the property to a customer, which would be you know the property name, that possibly. Yeah, that's totally how you can do it. You could tag your properties. Okay. Is there? You have no way to show it. Yeah, hold on, just a second. Okay. No, okay. don't do it that way. Just screen share. You did it before. <laughs> you would have to talk for a couple minutes for me to prepare. She came what over to I visit. Get? Huh? Look, she came over to visit. Oh, that's a nice kitty. She's um, a menace. Don't worry. While I'm talking, I could um. Person, I apologize to everybody for not um, up and running and ready for demo, so I can get that going. Uh, but that's totally how you'll do it. That's totally how you'll do it. Uh, you'll tag all of those real estate properties to the same um, customer, and then you will pull a trial balance, double click on the bottom of the trial balance, filter the report by the customer, and no matter what account it's posted to, the balance sheet and P&L details will come up. Um, and so that's pretty awesome. That's a way you can do it. Awesome. Okay. So there's another hashtag. I hashtagged the roll and keep rolling. And we also have another one. Uh, can you stump Dawn? Is, uh, I believe it's Kelly. I think it's K-Beast from T-Sheets who runs the actual T-Sheets.com 
Twitter feed, and that's the one that she just <laughs> she just rolled out. So um, okay. Let's I'm getting the QuickBooks set up. It's just going to take a couple seconds here because I wasn't really prepared for that, which is on me. Okay. Here. So I want to just say, uh, while you're doing that, I'm going to talk just a couple, for a couple minutes about um, the fact that I uh, took the QuickBooks Online Advanced Certification exam today. Well, then, heck yeah. And uh, it did not make me cry like the desktop exam did. And I'm, I'm just going to say, probably because this time I was not three months postpartum, thank God, and I'm all done with that. It's not, we're all done. The shop is closed, so no more babies. Um, I, for those of you who are new to the show, I took the uh, QuickBooks desktop advanced certification exam and I sobbed like a baby. Uh, curl up in the fetal position and told my husband that we're gonna if I didn't pass it basically basically we're gonna end up in a van down by the river uh, because I was just gonna lose everything by not passing that exam I ended up passing it but it almost killed me um, so I took the QBO exam today and I'm just gonna say it's I think it's a tough one um, it's it's not easy it, it's uh, it's pretty tough and I worked on the cert exam, so I had reviewed a lot of the material, and it still took me about three hours to do it. So, and I did, and I did not get 100% on every single section. So I'm just gonna say uh, that I think I got 100% on three of the five. So it, it it took me a while. So be prepared. My recommendation is um, if you haven't ever done, it's there are some questions that are similar to I think the desktop advance. So if you've taken that exam, uh, you kind of know, um, you know, I think you should allot some time for that. And what I would recommend is taking like maybe a day, uh, spend, plan on a few weeks to get the exam done basically. Um, take and, and block out maybe a day or half a day, go through the training material, uh, and then take the one section at a time. Uh, because you can always save where you are and leave and come back. Uh, one thing that I do want to recommend, and it's nothing because just nothing is infallible, um, is make sure uh, that you screenshot if you do if you have passed something. Um, okay. I'm a big fan of screenshotting mm. every question before I hit submit my answer. Um, so that I know. But what's really cool about the QBO exam is if you don't get 100% or you don't get the 80% the first time, it will actually, you go back and you don't have to take the whole exam, you only have to take the questions that you got wrong. But the tricky part with it is if there are multiple parts to the question that you got wrong, you don't know which of the multiple parts is the wrong part. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, and I will say this, make sure you check your numbers and double check and triple check because there were a couple times where I didn't get some wrong, right. I didn't get them right because I, I like fat fingered and I, I keyed in wrong. Like I couldn't figure out why I was getting one wrong and it was because I, I entered the number, I just entered it in wrong. And you know when you look at something over and over again, you just keep seeing the same thing and so finally I just, I actually just stepped away from my computer and came back and looked at it again and I there it was. So I was like, that's the stupidest thing ever. Um, because I was you only get four tries, four attempts to complete every section. So uh, just before you click submit, make sure you and just the one thing too is make sure it's right, but don't over don't overthink the questions. Um, so I just want to say that. So Dawn is gonna screen share. I'm gonna go ahead and shut up and <laughs> let her Put your hands under your legs. Do you are the? Can you see my screen? I can. Mm -hmm. That's because I'm in Unidata. Just saying. Anyway, always hosting. Thank you very much. Okay. So the question before was, and I'm gonna I'm gonna show real quick the uh, where you find that whole um, breakup. It's a dis, It's you know it's kind of a breakup with the Intuit Sync Manager, and then yet yeah, you get back together again, which is a wonderful reunite. But uh, anyway, so you were asking about uh, the, the customer, which I would say tag them as customers, these properties, um, and go down to accountant and taxes and go to the trial balance. Now for this example, I'm just going to say 
all dates, which I think would be reasonable in any um, example because you don't know it could be year to year. We know uh, the P and L is going to be based on uh, from and a two date where the balance sheet's cumulative. So if you just say all dates and you want to deal with this one, I'll call it customer. So I'm just going to double click on the debit uh, total in the debit column. Of course, this is giving me a whole ton of information, um, which you know we don't want. And then I'm going to go ahead and forget which uh, customer I picked, but I don't think it really matters. Then I'm going to scroll down to the filter. I'm going to pick a name, and I'm going to just pick Christy, who I, I wish I could meet her, and I wonder if she's real. That's a whole other thing. Christy, but I picked my friend Christy Abercrombie. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. she's a friend. I'm actually not going to pick her because she does not have any balance sheet um, balance sheet ones. Oh, and just so people know on the desktop, if you want to go ahead and change a filter, you don't have to go look for it again because, listen, I've been doing this for years and that's what I used to do. Scroll and go find the filter again, but really you can just click over here to the right and you can change it right from, from here, which, listen, I'm not going to say that I know everything because I definitely don't. So I just wanted to show that little tip because I forget. Uh, it's still not showing me any. Oh, maybe I just have to scroll up. Okay, so this one here, you'll notice anybody that's um, connect any transaction that's connected to Chris Baker Family Room is going to show up as a debit and credit. And the question was, um, can you see the original purchase price and all those things? So they can go ahead and at least just see all the debits and credits that happened related to that property. And so how do we combine? that information in a format where we can look and see. We could also do, really do it from the summary. Um, we don't have to go into the detail, but um, we could actually do both. So you just pull up the uh, trial balance and choose um, choose our guy. We're going to use Chris because Chris Baker's family room. And it'll show all the debits and credits just for that particular job. So again, that's just one way for you. And if the journal entry is right, you shouldn't have any assets. Those should be zeroed out, um, and you know potentially um, I typically put sale of properties if it's a special occasion and other income and expenses. You can see that detail, um, and that's typically where you put it, or um, maybe just from a gross a gross revenue um, and cost of goods sold on the P and L. But they could just go ahead and filter the summary and then double click on the detail from there and get the same report. So I think that's pretty cool. That's fun stuff. You know, I never, I never, never really asked me that before, maybe, and so I didn't really think of it. But you notice here on the in my data file, I was talking before. Uh, if you go to File, Set Up Into It Sync Manager. Now, what had happened with the client file is that it was syncing. I could go here, and it would have the sync. This one doesn't have sync, but if I come here, it would say, "Go ahead and sync now." And it was syncing with the App Center, which was really weird. And I was like, "Well, then why can't the App Center see it?" So I went over here to help to uh, manage data sync and I cleared the the um, connection to the Intuit App Center and so I think it was actually it says manage manage services but I think because this is not connected to the Intuit App Center it's not in here I'm pretty sure it is um, I'm just stand by everyone just stand by for a second um, or sit whatever you feel like doing yeah it's um, Manage services, and you can just basically delete it out. And it, you know, it's like, are you sure? Type yes, and you freak out, which I did a little bit. But you know what? I'm a, I'm a risk taker, so I blew that out. And then when I was done, I came back to file, set up into it, sync manager, and it launched the ability for me. This is a sample file, so who knows what this is going to do? But it, it it fires up the Intuit Sync Manager, wants you to log in. And that's where um, where it'll connect you to all the apps. So it's pretty awesome. Um, this is a sample file, so it's a little probably a little jazz, yeah, a little mad. It's a sample file. See, can't be synced. But normally it would work. It would fire up, and you would be jamming. So there's that. Love uh, it. I love I'm gonna it. Keep that up. But okay, so I'm going to unstop screen sharing. Stop. Okay, I'm not screen sharing anymore. Anyway, that's good stuff. Would you have, give me another question? Um, okay. I'm sorry. I was, I was texting Kelsey. Sorry. From Two Sheets. Listen. Questions. Let's go. I know. I, we were texting about how she's like, it's less than a week since I've seen you and I'm already suffering withdrawal. And I told her, I was, try, I was about to text her that that's what you and I go through every time we see each other. Like we cry uncontrollably when we have to leave each other at the airport. We don't really talk about we, it. We sob like babies. So, but we don't talk about it. Nope. So, 
Okay, here's a good one. I currently have QuickBooks 2013 on my PC, and I would like, I might answer this one if you don't mind. Whatever. You can pretend to be a desktop person. Go ahead. You know what? I'm going to pretend to be a Mac person. How about that? Fake it till you make it. Yeah. I see it. Yeah. It only yeah. takes one. Old lady, she's so sweet. She's my little old lady. The vet was like, she's soft like a bunny. That's what the vet said about it. She is. She's soft, just like a bunny. Okay. So the question is, I currently have QuickBooks 2013 on my PC and would like to switch to my Mac. Do I need to buy a separate copy? No. Yes or no, depending on how. Yes, you could go either way. So. If you want to keep your QuickBooks 2013, you can use it on your Mac because it's a version that you're used to and without really spending any extra money and buying a different version of QuickBooks, you can contact Unidata, go to unidataIT.com and you can host your QuickBooks 2013. And what's cool about that is it doesn't matter if you're on your PC, it doesn't matter if you're on your Mac, it doesn't matter if you're using an iPad, a phone, you can log in and it'll look like you're sitting in front of a Windows PC. You can access your QuickBooks 2013. I'm on the Mac. I know. I also have a Mac as well. And so I, we both have our Macs. Demoed um, QuickBooks 2014. Yeah. Right? Yep. So they will support, uh, as long as QuickBooks is supporting that software and it has not been sunsetted, you can host it. So once QuickBooks is done hosting, and I believe this year they're going to, uh, they just introduced 2015, so this May, they will sunset 2012 in May. Uh, so as long as you have 13, 14, or 15, you can still host it. Um, or if you don't want to do that and you would like to keep it uh stored locally, then yes, you will have to buy another version and you'll have to purchase the QuickBooks for Mac version uh, in order to, to have it on your Mac. Another option with your Mac is, and this is the route that I would probably go, usually my Mac cloud or people who want to use it on a Mac, is you can convert your desktop file to QuickBooks Online and that way you, it won't matter. Uh, you can you can go hosting, which I love my hosting account, but you can also convert it to QuickBooks Online and then it doesn't matter uh, what you're using. And there's actually uh, a native Mac client that you can use to access your QuickBooks Online uh, account. It's a little app that you can install on your Mac and it's pretty slick too. So that's my question for the night. Dawn, you have another question coming up. Are you ready? Well, I just want to say one okay. thing real quick. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That, uh, that stand by just one second or sit if you want to. But a very, very awesome friend, Kay Morgan, who's a QuickBooks Pro Advisor with the rest of us, and she cranks I it. I freaking love Kay Morgan. That I girl, love that woman. That, that woman is an animal. I'm just love saying. Her. She, I, I just, I don't know what to say about her, but she makes me laugh. My brain's out. So I just, she emailed me today just asking me in general, and I told her I would at least put it out there for people. But she is, wants to know if anyone is going to the Sleer conference that one of her team members cannot go, which I love that. She's his team members. She's adorable. She has an extra ticket of, for, that's an $840 ticket, which includes the dinner on Tuesday. And she said that she would take the cost of the dinner uh, and it, so the 840 includes dinner. So what she's saying is she'll take the dinner off so you get a free dinner on Tuesday. Um, and reservations at Caesars for the nights is already there for $159 a night, which is cheaper than you could probably get it today. Um, and then if if anybody's interested, if they can they can email me is fine, or they can email Kay. You know what? They can email Kay. Don't email me. Because but Kay Morgan, Kay Morgan at your front front eoffice.com, which is cute, I will tweet that out, um, is um, is looking for a substitute team member. So if you're looking for a ticket and you want a free dinner and a cheap room rate, she's looking for a substitute. Um, I'm sure that she'll buy some drinks for you if I know Kay Morgan. She's fab. I'm going to throw that out there and she's just going to have to commit. Um, so anyway, I I told her I would mention on the show in case there's somebody who's looking that could you know maybe save a little bit of money and still go. That's what I have to say about that. 
that's I have to say about that too. And Kay is a really, really awesome, amazing person, and so she's good people. I like her. I like her a lot. So, are you, do you want another question? Yep. We're rolling with Roland tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Mhm. Mm Here's a good one. How to reallocate parent account expenses to a sub account? And here's the question. Last year, I had one account, product. All product expenses were posted there. This year, I created two sub accounts, other and XXX, triple X. That is so filthy. Um, I don't even want to know what he's, what kind of product they're posting there. So I'm just going to say, if okay. they're naming it XXX, that's really dirty. I'm just going to put that out there. Um, comparative year reports show three accounts, other, this year's posting, XXX, winky wink, um, this year, and product, dash, other, mm -hmm. last year's postings. Would like to take the product, dash, other entries and reallocate them to the sub account of other in mm -hmm. the chart of accounts. Totally so, with you. Well, you know, I'm just going to say this about How the would you do this? John Brolin. Well, I, don't know I, I would. Think, I want to know how you would do it. Well, everyone would do it the same. They would totally reclassify transactions for for a very very big long period of time. Now, if they're a QuickBooks Pro user, which or QuickBooks Premier, that is not the accountant version. Might I add, uh, or is it edition? I don't know. I taught that last week, and I don't remember already. Um, but I can tell you, if you are that. Uh, like an end user, and maybe that's an end user question, I'm not sure. It is worth the investment of yeah. buying the accountant edition, buy it, and reclassify transactions using the accountant tools, make your dates be all, or you know, from 1 1 to 19, like when you were born. So 1 1 1970, when I was born, to today, and then just choose that parent account. And, and reclassify them. Now obviously you're not going to reclassify them to just one. So there's still going to be work involved. You're going to think about it. Who are the vendors? You may have to sort by vendor. Um, obviously everything wouldn't be product-other. So um, you have to think about it. It's not just going to be like a 30 second trick. But the reclassifying transactions should solve your world. Because one at a time costs you too many dimes. That's what I'm. I'm going with that rhyme. Yeah. <laughs> You're not even paying attention. No. It, you deserve that because you didn't even that, know how corny that was. When you too much it, time will cost you a whole ton of dimes. That, yep. Sorry about that. that. There you go. I apologize in advance for that, and we can open the window and let that sucker out. That one was pretty funny. I'm just going to say. Oh, here's a good one that I don't even know the answer to. This is like a woody question. Oh, oh, well then let's save it. Well, I don't know. Let's you and I discuss it because I've never seen... All right, bring it on. Let's do it. I don't even know the answer and I think it's a good... I don't even know the question, so bring it. Can I remove my most recent accountants updates that were downloaded in error and then download the correct and import the correct updates what do you t you mean an update to the software i don't know so when i delivered my accountants copy to my accountant in january for tax in parentheses for tax purposes he opened it up for review and made some changes to my contact information for him he had me go ahead and load it into my laptop and update QuickBooks while I was still in his office. Mm -hmm. I just received an email that my accountant's updates are ready for download from the web, but the option is grayed out in QuickBooks. I suspect it is because I downloaded the update in his office back in January. You can't download it. You can't. If you've already done the update and he was sitting there, it's over. Right? So I didn't see the other part of it. So basically, they've already imported. So they did an accountant's copy, yeah, and she imported the changes, and then the accountant did more work, not realizing that that wouldn't, they needed a new accountant's copy. Correct. 
Interesting. Yeah. So the answer is just no. Sorry, Chari. Yeah. No, 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 no. That doesn't even make sense. No. Not going to happen. Well, it does make sense, but no, you can't do it because the account yeah, the accountant yeah, made the mistake. Like, the accountant made the mistake. So the accountant it obviously maybe, re I, I've never heard of this happening, but maybe reopened the accountant's copy and made more changes and then tried to send them back. But re in reality, what needed to be done was a new accountant's copy needed to be created and sent and then worked in that and then sent back. So that was... I just had to work. Th I just had to work through that one, Dawn. That's all. I just had to. I had to work through it. For you, supporting you. I'm just. Kelsey's challenged me about stumping me, and that's not going to happen. I'm going to say it. I'm looking right in, right at you, Kelsey. Not well, going to. Kelsey's trying. She's sort of teasing me about the fact that she's going to be at Slater when she said she wasn't originally. And yes. are you coming to Slater even for maybe a day? Uh, unless someone wants to pay my two thousand dollar airfare, no. Okay. Okay. You should still go to Slater. I'm just. I want to pay for my two thousand dollar airfare, and I'll be there. It's not two thousand uh, dollars. Anyway. Check Delta yourself, okay? And you know I and you know I'm kind of a snotty traveler, so there's that. Uh yeah, we. we yeah, both are. So here's the deal. Here's what's so funny, is I don't think. Well, I'll tell you about it later. It's okay. but that's like I for a second I forgot we were doing a live show and I thought it was just you and I chatting, having a conversation. Come on, give me another question. I'm ready. I'm ready. So here's one. Can I change the order in which columns print on an income statement? When using the pre written QuickBooks report, the income statement prints the columns in this order. Current month, last year to date, current year to date. Management prefers to see them listed in current month, current year to date, last year to date order. I cannot drag the columns to the new position. How can I change the order in which they print? I'll tell you how you do it. QuickBook Statement Writer. There you go. Well, there you go. Well, There's the answer. We can answer. Because you know what? I was just checking, double checking. I didn't get the hand grab in the columns when I did a previous year comparison. You can't do that. Or a budget versus actual or any of those reports. But using the QuickBook Statement Writer, you can put them in whatever order you want. You can add multiple years. You can do comparisons. You can do it all. So QuickBooks Statement Writer would be your answer. And I agree with them. No, you can't do it natively within the product. That okay. was really fancy. Yeah. Here's one. Here's a good one. I don't know if it's going to stump you, but it's a good juicy question. You ready? I'm going to rabbit hole it as best I can. All right. I just want to mention, too, that you guys can tell that it's getting uh, to be a little bit cold because I had to bust out the sweater down in my basement. So starting okay. to get to be wintry. Um, here in the mitten. Uh, so my QuickBooks is pulling the wrong company file. I'm having a little, I love this, a little issue with a customer's QuickBooks. Here's the setup I have. And are you ready for this? Because this is a little... I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm focused. This is the kind of thing where if you told this to me, I would, my eyes would glaze over and I would just tell you, you know what, can you email it to me? Because I can't, I'm not going to... Bring process. it. Yeah, Bring okay. It. I have one computer that holds the company file. It has QuickBooks installed on it and, and is set up for multiple users. I have two other computers that are networked to the main computer that pulls the company file as well. Network path for the server, and then it says like main server, QB file, company name. I have all three computers accessing this location. For some reason, the server and one of the other computers pull the right data but the third one does not pulls an older version of that company, but there is no other company than that one in there, which there's no possible way. There's They need to do, and I'm just going to say, they need to do a search on their whole network for like asterisk.qbw and find all of their QBW files. I would 100% say that this is a mapping issue. We have a we may have a situation where that computer has lost the map drive to where the original and correct QuickBooks is um, because it's not possible for for a computer's networking setup to there's definitely a, a, a QuickBooks old QBW where that computer is mapped to and if they can't see the same server which would be named the same as the other computers there's definitely been a disconnection somehow and I am not a computer expert but I have worked in, in enough multi environments to know when 
that doesn't make sense from yeah. a quick perspective enough to say get the computer guy in here and and you know what I'm just gonna say this as well I love I love computer people I love them because they know more than I will ever even I they know more at breakfast than I know in my lifetime someone said that I thought that was an awesome quote um, so I don't remember who it was but it was definitely last week and so the thing about the computer guys is that sometimes they're like, no, this isn't, this is gonna work. We can do this, or this is gonna work, and whatever. I've had situations where I'm like, nope, you need a hardwired landline. Like, you need a hard wire to make this second station to your point of sale work. And the computer guys say, no, I can definitely. This will work wireless. We'll do a booster. And I'm like, cool. You know what? I don't care how you do it. I don't care if you order extra spaceships or put something in orbit, but you need to make sure that this computer can talk to that computer directly, like a map drive type thing. And they still, they're like, yeah, okay, and then you show up and it's not done. And they're like, well, the booster didn't work, and so we didn't put in the hard wire, and so I just want to strangle them. And I just demand it. The client's like, you said, and I'm like, no, I didn't say. Your computer right. put that, and that's why I put everything in writing, and I have it. So I would just say from that networking question, it, you know when there's a problem with finding a right data file and if you can't find that right data file, you get that computer person in there, grab them by the throat, put them in the corner and you tell him, you find that computer and find the right QuickBooks file and you like threaten if you have to. Give me a call, I'll come out. It's going to cost, you know, you got it's gonna be a direct flight. So I've seen this, um, and what's happened is uh, I had one client who had a similar problem like this, and they had, I mean, a very similar setup, and only there were a couple computers that were pulling different files, and what they didn't realize was their backup system was actually creating, it, they weren't going through the backup process through QuickBooks, their server was creating a copy of it and like their backup system was creating a copy of the file and then putting it on the server so they had multiple copies of the QBW file and somehow some way that one of their computers was actually accessing one of the copies that was actually in their backup folder so again map like a mapping issue um, but it's just really, it boils down to multiple copies, I think, of uh, the file. So you always, and I always tell people, it doesn't matter. I know it's great that you have a server and everything, um, but you still need to go through the backup process in QuickBooks Desktop um, because it's going to do that verify the data and all of that stuff uh, because even if you, if you have some data corruption in your file and you're just copying and your, your backup system is, is copying, it's, all it's doing is copying bad data. So you always want to still make sure that you do that backup process through QuickBooks and you can actually set it up so that it does it automatically. Um, if you have a network server and the server is always on and the file is stored, you can do it that way. Uh, you can just take one night a week where you leave your computer on overnight and you set it, you know that every Tuesday night you don't shut your computer down when you leave the office. There's a cat um, behind me. And then you set it so that it, you know, it'll do the backup automatically at like 3 o'clock in the morning. So make sure you always do that. And one of the reasons why I say that is uh, when I first uh, started my business and I, had, I just became a pro advisor, I had a client who uh, he was doing the backup. And you always want to make sure you do the verified data when you go through and backup. I had a client who thought he was going to save just that smidgen of time and not verify the data. He was backing up. Uh, but what happened is he actually had a little bit of data corruption and even though it was saying it was backing up properly, he never actually looked at the backup and this is why I always tell people, um, you know, make sure like you check your backup on a regular basis, just restore it, put it to your desktop and then dump it if you have to um, because what happened is he would back up and he wasn't verifying the data and when his file kindly, you know, finally just died altogether, we went to go do a backup and it wouldn't restore and it wouldn't restore and finally I opened the folder where the backup was and the file size was zero because he wasn't doing, he wasn't verifying his data so it wasn't ever finding uh, the data corruption that was in it to do the rebuild. So 
my suggestion is always do the QuickBooks backup and then at least once a month just restore the backup, restore it to your desktop or someplace, you know, and then just delete the 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 file just to make sure that the the backup actually works. So, just my two cents. We have time maybe for one more question. Mm -hmm. Yep. <clears throat> Ready. Ah, let's see. This a POS question? Do you know what no. about POS? No? no. Okay. This might be the stumping one. What? <clears throat> POS question or another one? Uh, let's see. Because that doesn't count as a stumping. It's not. That's a specialization. I know. I know. I mean, I, pro my, I might know it. No, nah, you know what? Here. Here's one about inventory assembly. This is a good okay. one. Great. So we're going to go a little bit over because it's already 8.30 and I don't care. Uh, change in inventory as assembly. Uh, suppose I created an inventory assembly, and this is going to be our last question, um, and saved it. After using it for months, I noticed an error in the bill of materials <clears throat> and costs. Mm. The sales had been debiting the wrong inventory part and also assuming the wrong cost for cost of goods sold. Now I correct that information in the assembly record, but is there a way to propagate the corrected information to historical sales of that assembly, or it will will it be used only on transactions going forward? Only on transactions going forward. You can't change the history. Not going to happen. There's not like I would love that there was somebody asked me, can we ask into it for an undo button? Mm -mm. Not going to happen. So the answer is no, but you know what? It's I love that they figured it out and know they need to change it. They fix it and they, they're good moving forward. I love that. Okay, fair enough. It was a great. It was a great. I thought it was going to be a ten minute, but it's not. No. You want to do one more? Yeah. Or are we done? No, I love it. I'll do it for seven hours straight, man. Screw off okay. Pacific time. It's only five freaking thirty. Oh yeah, because we're, you and I are both still on yeah, fake time. I'm almost ready for dinner. I, I'm almost ready for dinner too. I have not been to sleep before two o'clock in the morning since we got back. It's amazing that just four days on the on the left coast screws you and I up so bad when we're out of the real time. So, yeah. Uh, here's a good one. This is a payroll question. You ready? Sure. How do I find W two information from a previous year? Mm. One of my employees needs me to reissue a W-2 from 2010. Yes. How do, I, how do I find that in QuickBooks? Is there a report that will show the dollar value and quantity of inventory? A, what? That's wrong. There. How do I find that in QuickBooks? That's two different questions. Okay, that's good. Yeah, shut, the, shut that down halfway there. Um, so there's a couple of things there. they can do. If the W-2s were prepared in a desktop file on the same computer that they're that they have currently and they weren't they didn't transfer the whole that's a whole I'm gonna rabbit hole that so I won't say that. But when you create W2s they will PDF for you in the background in the C drive. Um, and I say that because um, you could go ahead and create use you know create a, a go to the forms in uh, QuickBooks, and of course we're assuming they're using desktop, they go ahead and create the form in the desktop, um, and so like let's just say it's this year, it's 2014, all the forms are dated for 2014. The W-2 is off the top of my head, I don't know if they're dated 2013, but I'm going to say that they're not. I'm going to say that all going for you know, it's 2014 moving forward. Um, so this is what I do, this is, this is going to be the Brolin answer which is the second answer because the first one is try to find the PDF in the background of the C drive if the W2s were created in the, on that computer. The second thing is you could have pre-printed forms still in your file cabinet. You could, but I'm sorry, you probably don't. Second answer. If I got up right now, I'll go find you some 2010 forms in a cabinet in the I'm back. I'm I don't have any at all. I'm and do you know why? Because I, I just can't let go. Anyway, so that's, that's the second answer. The third answer is to print it on the on the blank like non pre printed. So you're just printing it natively out of QuickBooks, which I see those happen all the time. Um, IRS doesn't really regulate it. They're supposed to put it on these fancy forms and all this stuff that we pay a ton of money for. But you could print it, and then you could use something like this. 
That is called white out. Yeah. I've had to do that where you print it and you write it out and then you take a Sharpie and you change the 13 to a zero. Done. I've done that. Who hasn't done that? If you say you haven't done that, you're a liar. Well, yeah. maybe not. Not Kelsey. And, you know what? and if you're going to lie about that, then that makes Dawn and I sad because at this point we feel like here that we've connected and, and we've got... Is it the right thing to do? Yeah. It is. Now, I would love if QuickBooks would come up with a solution for that where you could choose the form. I get that that's asking a lot, um, but it's part of the reason why you use into a full service payroll. Yeah. I don't know if QuickBooks Online Payroll saves the old forms and you can reprint them. You, you can know, print like, them. I can go all yeah. the way back. I've been using uh, Intuit Online Payroll for accountants. I think I converted. I stopped paying for. Did you like that? Just like that. That's what I did. Smack that enhanced payroll right still away. Use, still use enhanced <laughs> payroll right here. You know why? Because I, I job cost. I job cost. I Just want to throw that. Go ahead. We can fist fight in the end of the show <laughs> right now if you want to. Nope. I would never. Well, you I know what? Never you. I, I would never hit you. I would give you a wedgie, but I would never, I would never ever hit you. Wedgie. I'm going to say that. So I moved to QBO. Uh, or to IOP4A uh, four years ago. You can do some job costing with it if you're on desktop. You still have to do journal entries with QBO. And also, I had a little chit chat with Kathy Iconis today, and apparently she's got this badass spreadsheet that she does where she just has it all, you plug in the numbers, and it gives you the journal entry. And I'm going to kind of do like a QA review for it. And I, I told her she needs to start selling that on her website. Um, so hopefully, she can get that going for all of you who have to do the journal entries for job costing in QBO. Uh, Iconis may have a solution for you. Or I know she does have it. Hopefully she's going to have it available. We'll take a portion of that proceed, by the way. No problem. Nope. Nope. I'm not. I'm just going to, I just want to support my girl. That's I all I want. She's sweet. All I want to do. She's sweet. Nice kid. Freak I love Iconis, and I do want to mention. Had an amazing pair of leggings that had they were like leather on the front and kind of like like jean like jeggings on the back uh, at QB Connect and they were really, they were sort of amazing they looked like jeans on the back and then they were kind of like leather looking and they were leggings and they were amazing and they were awesome and I want to go get myself a pair so they were really super awesome I got a collar out of that I'm just not I'm and not she also had a really cute so what were we talking about? Payroll. Oh yeah, with IOP4A, I can go back and I can reprint, and it'll actually show the correct year because it archives it as is. I don't have to do that whiteout crap that I used to have to do with um, enhanced payroll. So there's yeah, that. Your journal entry thing isn't going to get you a new W-2, so suck that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. So good luck with that. Nice work. Do you want do you want an inventory question? No. And then we'll be done. No. No. Are you? No? You want one? I'll give you a question. We got a we got a nice QBO payroll no, question. You, yeah. You said Wendy emailed. I can't guarantee that I'm gonna know the answer, but and bring it. I have I I've, I've not been prepared, so it's your turn. Okay. Look, okay. Look at your face. You're like. I'm like I'll bring, yeah, I'll bring okay. it. Okay. Just got a new QBO client. Get your hands off your keyboard and pay attention to me. Just got a QBO client. Has been in QBO for four years with QB full service payroll attached and worked fine through June of 2014. This is so funny that this question is here. I go in and find no tax payments from 614 made, but QBO's tax liability report shows that it's paid. Get your hands off the keyboard. They got IRS notice of non-payment. So QBO, she says full service payroll, but I don't think Intuit full service payroll has been around for four years, only two. So I think it's only been a couple because they the complete payroll was gone for a while, and then I, I don't remember when they brought Intuit full service. It had to be around two years ago. Don't remember. So they got a notice. IRS says it isn't paid, but the QB, uh, she finds no tax payments made, but QBO's tax liability report says it's paid, and you don't have to answer this. You can think about it. You don't even have to answer it today. That's how I roll. Well, so, so she says. 
suggest report to figure if it is or not is or is not paid. I would say go to that stinking bank account, see if the check is clear. I'm going to answer it for you. So well, there's not really a report. Oh, go ahead. Or do we have to call them? Is this old QBO versus new BO, new QBO cause? Stacy, love the kitties. Congrats, you're the best. Advanced QuickBooks online, advanced certified. Stacy killed all. Um, I thought you were going to answer it. You're not going to answer it now? I was going to say, if I don't even have to know QBO, and I would just go to the bank account and find out if the check cleared. Check didn't clear, they didn't pay it. I don't know what the problem is with liability report. And I've never right, seen and I would say that too, but also uh, as far as like the reporting and what's showing in QuickBooks, I mean, obviously finding out if it was actually paid is the, is the, is the first and foremost thing, but as far as the reporting, it's almost impossible to answer the question without knowing exactly what version of payroll they're using. So I don't know. It sounds. I don't know if they've been using it for four years. It, it really it can't be IFSP. It hasn't been around for four years. It's online payroll, and she's looking at a tax liability report, which I I don't I don't possible look at it. I that's what I make Christine do. She's in charge of that. She might be able to. She might be able to tell you because she looks at it. Because I don't. But. Um, I would say something is suspect. Something is suspect. And what I would say is that possibly if they're using IOP, that payment uh, was maybe... Rejected, maybe. It was, it, well, I don't know that it was necessarily rejected, but maybe they originally scheduled it, and then for some reason they deleted it before it actually went through, because you can do that in IOP. There you go. Um, be and they didn't... Mm. They didn't export it into into QBO. I'd have to. This is one of those yeah, things yeah, where I a lot of those I gotta. I gotta get my my hands. I gotta I see it, touch it, around it. it. Yeah, I gotta. I gotta get dig in, and so uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna say I don't know. Stumped. You know what? You're not stumped. You need more information. Uh, well, yeah, this is true. But I'm slightly stumped. I'm stumped because I need more information. How about that? That's different. Yeah. In my opinion. All right. I say uh, that's a good thing to end it on. I want to say. Gotta be you, okay. I'm going to say thank you to our sponsors, oh, uh, yeah. UnidataIT.com. We love some some hosting. Um, they were amazing this last week. We had a lot of issues, and they really hooked us up, and they helped us out a lot. Uh, T-Sheets always, I mean, just not just an amazing product, amazing people, Avalara.com, uh, sales tax, they just, they deal with sales tax. So if you have, uh, if you're an end user, you're a, a small business owner and you have complex sales tax, uh, sale, you want to be looking at Avalara. If you are an accounting professional and you have clients who have some, comp or you just don't want to deal with sales tax. I'm not dealing with it. Talk to Avalara or... Even one of, yeah, or you can email us uh, show at the qbshow.com and we'll hook you up with any of our sponsors um, and, and let us know. So uh, we will see you next week. We'll be around. Peace out. T sheets. No way, thumb drives, no attachments. Get the files anywhere when you're permitted access. What's the matter? Brush it with the hassle. Jump up in the cloud and join us in the castle. We're high up in the clouds and we're now.